All right, finishing up this review packet. I got four problems left to go. Here we have simplification. I don't think these are going to be too bad. Obviously, it'll take me a while to teach them. But one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this rule about x to the negative n being 1 over x to the n. Oh, we're not writing. Or 1 over x to the negative n being x to the n over 1. Now, what this rule is saying in words, which is kind of a big deal, if an exponent is negative, move it, and it becomes positive. That's what it's saying. Now, I'm going to do some simple stuff, too. Like, I've got 4 over 24. Like everybody knows 4 over 24 is 1 and 6. I'm going to put the 1 even though it's not required. There's an x to the fifth down low. Its exponent is positive. I'm going to leave it there. This guy right here is negative. I'm going to move x to the eighth down low and change the sign on that exponent. And like I know kids are like, why? Why do you do things like that? Because that's the rule. I don't question the rule. If I break the rule, I miss the problem. Y to the seventh is fine where it is. This guy needs to be moved up top, negative exponent, y squared. Is this the only way to do this problem? Of course not. And it looks to me like this is z to the eighth over z to the eighth. Let's look at the actual document and see what she is. Close some stuff out too. Maybe I can get this keypad to work right. Yeah, they are going to knock each other out. They are the same exact thing. So those guys, strike right through. Now I'm going to combine like terms. Y squared times Y to the seventh is Y to the ninth. And X to the fifth times X to the eighth is X to the thirteenth, because 5 plus 8 is 13. And there's a 6 down low. And that looks really bad. It's because I cannot get this thing to write properly. Sorry about that. All right, what's up with 27? 27 is going to use the conjugate idea. The idea in 27 is simply multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. I'll take some extra time and type this out, or at least the setup so you can see the setup. I don't have a square root symbol. I have to do stuff like this where I actually draw. It's kind of annoying. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by the conjugate of the denominator. And the conjugate of 3 minus root 3 is 3 plus root 3. time. Gonna do some wrapping here, maybe.
And I'm going to use what's called the double distributor property. That's what I'm going to do. So double distributing 2 times 3 is 6. Two times a positive root three. Is going to be two root three. I'm going to get another one right there. That's going to be 3 root 2, actually. And then we have root 2 times root 3, which is going to be root 6. Now I get to work on down low. With the conjugate, the only things that matter down low are the first and the last pieces. Everything else cancels out. 3 times 3 is going to be 9. And a root of 3 times root of 3 is 3. Positive times a negative is negative. And then I'm going to clean this thing up. And be done with it. So let's see what we got. Up top, there's really nothing like, is there? So instead of writing this down and fighting my pen for an hour and a half, I'm just going to say 9 minus 3 is 6. And now... I am done. My answer. And again, I'm sorry that the pencil is not working right. I'm supposed to get a new laptop in about a week. So maybe after the snow that we hopefully get, I have a new laptop, we'll be in good business. All right, we got 28 and 29. 28, super easy. If you miss this one, you're really not paying much attention at all. You literally do not understand math. You can put that on your resume. If you miss 28, you do not understand math. In fact, I'm going to write that out just to put an emphasis on this one. If you do not understand 28, you do not understand math at all. Now, if that insulted you, good. Figure it out. All right, the opposite of a square root symbol has always been a square. I'm going to square both sides. And that's going to free up the interior. So since squares counteract square roots, the inside becomes 2m minus 6. And on the other one, it becomes 3m minus 14. Now I'm going to put my M's on one side and my numbers on the other. I'm actually going to shift my M's to the right. And I'm going to shift my constants to the left. Like I already had a negative 6 there. So I'm going to add 14. And this is it. This thing is done. I get 8 equals M. And I'm done. All right. 29 is up next. 29 is negative 3 equals 37 minus 3n to the 1 half minus n. Oh, that thing looks bad. What we're going to do is we're going to isolate the radical or exponent. Then we're going to counteract the radical slash exponent. And this one's going to have two answers. We're going to have to check for extraneous. It's just the way it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my negative end and I'm going to shift it over here. All right. It's going to make it positive. N minus 3 is equal to 37 minus 3N to the 1 half power. And now I'm going to counteract the 1 half power, which by the way is the square root. by raising both sides to the second power. Now 
Now you've already got a half up in the exponential space. So I'm just going to put times 2. To square the left, I have to write it twice. And the right-hand side gets freed up. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the DD property. I'm going to get n to the second minus 3n minus 3n plus 9 equal to 37 minus 3n. Uh, because I see n to the second, I'm going to set the equation equal to a zero, because that's what we do. I'm going to do that by moving everything left. So I have a negative 6n on the left. If I add 3n, I'll be at minus 3n. And 9 minus 37, pretty tired, I'm pretty sure is negative 28. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor, my favorite word, factor, n minus 7, n plus 3, sorry, plus 4. So my n values are 7 or n equals negative 4. Now I warned you guys about this. If two answers, check for extraneous. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to check for extraneous. So let's go to the original equation. Negative 3 equals 37 minus 3. Let's plug in the 7 to the 1 half minus 7. Negative 3 equals 3 times 7 is 21. 37 minus 21 is 16. Wish I could write. You need to know that the one half power is the square root. Like you really need to know that. So this gives me negative three equals square root of 16, four minus seven, negative three equals negative three. It's a real answer. All right, what's the other answer I got? Negative four, negative three equals 37 minus three times a negative four. This answer is also going to work, at least I feel like it's going to, minus a negative 4. Negative 3 equals 49 to the 1 half, because negative times negative is positive, 37 plus 12. Oh, no, nope, it's not. And then plus 4. This one fails. This is negative 3 equals square root of 49, 7 plus 4. And this fails. So n equals negative 4 is extraneous. Now, I'm going to write this over here because I mean this. Your test asks for the extra. It does. So make sure you know how to pick it out. And that, boys and girls, is the end of this little review sheet. I have spent a lot of time making it because I can't write, so I've been typing for you. I hope that helped you. Good day.